I mentioned, Donald, we wanted to talk about the attitude to gay sports people and also the challenges involved in being gay in that world. Um, I mean, of all current inter-county GEA players, Irish rugby players, Irish soccer players, there's no out gay man uh, currently. Are you surprised that people haven't followed your lead there? Yeah, like, I don't know about that. I think that, you know, maybe there's not at, at the top of the game in, in, in any of those sports, but I think, you know, I, I came out since I came out, there's been a lot of people at different levels in sport, and I think Irish society has changed a lot, and I think that Ireland is a, is a far more welcoming place, a far more tolerant place. Um, Why is that not reflected at the top level then, do you think? I don't know, it's up to people themselves, like, you know what I mean? I don't think there's ever a kind of a, a right or wrong way, or maybe people saw, you know, yeah, there's one guy after doing it, why is there a, a need for, for other people? And it'd be slow to kind of, you know, uh, say to people that they have to come out, or that, you know, they should, or that they've got a duty. It's, it's, it's everyone to their own. It'd also be slow as well to kind of talk about, you know, uh, I think it's a bit disrespectful to, to high-level sports teams to maybe, you know, say that the dressing room wouldn't accept them or whatever. I think that, you know, players, and from my experience, players who get to a high level have a certain quality about them, and all I can really do is talk about my own experience, and it was a, a really positive one. Nikki, there's probably a perception there that it's easier in women's sports. Is that the case? Is that true for you? Absolutely not. I don't think it's, it's easier in any situation for anyone to come out, I think, especially for younger people. Um, but yeah, in my case, it was pretty easy. I was lucky. Uh, family were great. My club was great. But yeah, I don't think it's, it's much easier. But there is sort of perception that um, I think guys, maybe it's a bit harder for them. Um, how, I'm not sure why. But well, we'll get back into that. But how did you, in terms of, say, telling your teammates, is there a big announcement that happens or is it just an organic thing more so? Yeah, for me it was quite organic. It just kind of happened. Um, people sort of finding out and slowly finding out, slowly telling people. Um, and yeah, it just came out that way rather than me actually going by the way. Um, so yeah, it, it's, it was good for me. Um, but it doesn't happen that easy for most people. Yeah, so in the dressing room it was absolutely fine, but was there a downside in the sporting environment, like supporters or people around the team, maybe from outside the dressing room? Sometimes uh, there was a little bit um, about, you know, calling the club, maybe if there's a few people on the team that were gay, it was like, oh, be careful, you know, there, there's too many there, or this sort of thing. Um, but this is all hearsay that you hear around. You don't necessarily, people are very um, slow to come and say it to you face to face, um, which is, is sad as well. It's all behind your back. Um, when you say behind your back, you're, you're hearing from other people that these things were maybe said in the stands or yeah, something like I that? Yeah, I think so. I think you right. probably had the same, a little bit of experience. Um, but yeah, people are slow to come to say it to you face to face um, and yeah that's what happened that's probably your experience as well Donald Logue, for the most part yeah and like I, I, I'm always conscious that like I said I've, I had a really positive experience and I, I'm conscious not to you know maybe don't play it and I, I'm conscious that there are younger people in Ireland who every move that they make that they're weighed down by this thing but yeah I got a bit of stick I got, got a bit of stick in the terraces and stuff like that but genuinely it never got to me and I always felt it was more of a reflection on the person who was giving you the stick than it was on myself. Mm -hmm. And um, like, any of the, do I get nasty stuff? No, I don't think I really get nasty stuff. Well, the stuff I come across can be quite ignorant or stupid. Like it's, uh, I was at a, a buddy stag there a couple of months ago and another one of his friends came up to me and he said, look, I want to get your advice. He said, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm organizing a, 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 the wedding and the seating and stuff like that. And he said, look, there's a couple of gays coming. And I said, there's a couple of gays coming, is there? Yeah? <laughs> and he said, <laughs> I think, should I put them all sitting at the one table? <laughs> like, yeah. Or after the all Ireland final a couple of weeks ago, I got, I got, a, I got a letter in the post, and uh, there, was, uh, there was this guy giving out, and he was saying you know, that he was taking serious umbrage with me, what, what he thought, expressing my sexuality through my dress by wearing a dicky ball. And I said right. to me, I was saying, what about George Hook and these guys? Or there was a, a thousand people down at the All Stars last week, you know, he'd have a lot of letters to be writing. So, and even when the nasty stuff comes, it, I, I, I'd have to say I haven't received that much of it. I, I think, mean, sorry, just interview, but like it's funny and all, but like that actually happens. Like people say, and you're still using that word, and it's it's not cool, like for most people to you know to hear that around, and especially for younger people who might be thinking of coming out. It's like it makes it harder because they're like, oh, we're just going to be put into that sort of box. So um, I think it's important just to to note that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Shane, why do you think it's so rare in men's sport? Um, I think for some of the reasons that Donald mentioned, um, it's difficult. 
to get out into the media, you want to be the first one there. You know, there's been a couple of trailblazers, but I think it would be difficult. Uh, and some players just don't want that attention on them. Um, you know, uh, from a from a perspective of what goes on in the terraces, you potentially, you know, people don't want to to feel that. They don't want the exposure and maybe the intrusion into their private life as well. Because maybe not so much in Ireland, but in the UK. Um, I think that you know the first soccer player really to come out um, and be playing at the top level. Um, there's going to be you know papers going to be going after that person. Going to be looking at their private life. Not everybody wants the exposure. And I think probably even the way like uh, a, a gay man, the men, the number of um, partners they have is somewhat different, or it's, it's highlighted in a different way to. Um, a straight man and the amount of sexual partners that they may have. It's interesting that you raised a few different po possible issues there and none of them were the reaction of teammates. Nikki said that teammates are fine in women's sports, certainly in her case Donald Logue says the same thing. It's disrespectful to think a dressing room would think in any way differently of somebody. But Gareth Thomas said that he had a great reaction from his teammates but years previously he had worried, he had to be, be words thrown around in a derogatory way, not meant to be hurtful to people, but just used quite loosely. And he, he built this idea up in his head that, well, I, I can't tell these guys. Well, this, this... I think there's been a generational change there as well. There's been a shift. You look at some of the, uh, uh, Paul O'Connor who came out um, about 15 years ago. I think that on the most part, he had a good experience, but not entirely so. I think he lost some friends who were coming out. I think if you look at what's gone on, the experience of, of gay people in rugby at the moment, people who have come out, Nigel Owens is a top-level referee. Uh, he's uh, been, it's, he's come out, he's been welcomed and embraced. Um, you mentioned uh, Gareth Thomas, uh, Paul McGinley, who's a um, physio with the Scottish team again. Uh, he's embraced. I think that my experience of, of both in the Leinster team I was in and the Irish team that I was in, I have no doubt that, uh, that anybody who was coming out would be embraced. Um, and would be welcomed. And I think anybody, you know, I'm not saying universally, I'd say that, you know, if there was one or two people with issues, they'd be the ones I think would be marginalized. That's my experience. And if you look at the experience of those individuals that are in rugby and have come out recently, um, it's been an overwhelmingly positive uh, experience. It's good to hear that because I wanted to ask, is there a stereotype still there that a, a top level male sports person is a man's man, he's supposed to be masculine and he's supposed to be physical and all these things and that doesn't tie in with the, the tired old stereotypes of what a gay man is necessarily. Yeah, I think that, that that's true and you know, <coughs> TV and the media maybe have contributed to that over, over, over the years but I'd also say there's like, that that's exists in wider society as well, you know, you can talk about mental health, you can talk about all those areas, you know, sports people tend to have a shield around them and people don't think that they, you know, they've other things going on in their lives or that they've got problems or that they're, you know, might be weighed down with worries or, like I said, mental health issues. And I, I know within the, the Gaelic Players Association, we've been very conscious of that to, I suppose, raise awareness that the, the player is more than just his county jersey. What do you think, Nicky? Is it, you mentioned the label, uh, the issue there of being put in a box or whatever it might be. Once uh, there's media attention attached to that, particularly in the bigger male sports like football, could that be a part of the problem that, uh, or a barrier there that a man doesn't want to just be seen as the first gay footballer in England, for example, or certainly the first gay footballer in a long time in England? Yeah, absolutely. And in previous um, elite athletes, they've had issues with endorsements. They, I think they've realized or they felt that if they came out as being gay, they might lose these endorsements. And that's an issue. And you've seen it in some of them that waited till they're finished their career before they've decided to come out. So I think that's a big issue as well. Um, but with the female athletes, it's, it's slightly different. Um, I think female, well, it's kind of changed, but like before it was always like, oh, it's not, it's okay. I mean, a lot of girls who play sport, they're sure, yeah, they're gay. It's, it's kind of like in, you're in the box again. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, yeah, again, yeah, 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 it's the opposite for girls. That's it, but even to challenge yourselves, lads, like I, I remember looking at the Michael Sam situation really closely. Mm. Mm. And I actually felt that the media were making a bigger deal about it than anybody else. Like, none of his teammates seemed to have issues. Mm -hmm. He was getting on with things, but you, you had this constant media mm -hmm. following him, asking him crazy questions about, you know, the showers and stuff like that. The man was going in washing himself and going away home, and they were kind of, you know, asking, asking him about this. It was, you know, so I, I think sometimes, as in a lot of situations, the media can be slower to move on than general society, with all due respect. And do you think it could get to a critical point, actually, where there is a, an, enough people have come out 
that it's not an issue. So those questions aren't asked. At the moment, there's only like one or two people and everything and every question, every idea that pops into anyone's head is, you know, is directed at that individual. Mm. And very often, you know, much to the detriment of their, 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 their sporting career, it's like, what is their you know, private life, their sexuality, all those questions. But if there was going to get to a critical point where more people felt were comfortable to come out, it's actually then that isn't the question that isn't asked or directed at one person or two people the whole time. So I think you're right in what you're saying, and I think that day will come. Even the conversation between myself and Murphy was to ask me that question about other people coming out, and I was saying, yeah, I hope to God they will, because I won't have to be coming up to Dublin. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, so I, I, I'd agree with you, Shane. Yeah. But jo- yeah, joking aside, that is the, the point that I was making yeah. earlier, that the, you're the person that, and there aren't many in Ireland, there aren't, there aren't many gay sports people in Ireland, so of course we're going to naturally mm-hmm. think you're the guy to talk to and you can speak intelligently a- about it. Um, does that bother you that, that you're the, the go-to guy? No, it doesn't bother me at all. Like, I, I mean this, I forget him, yeah. I need, to be, I need to be reminded about it. It doesn't, it doesn't impact on my work when I meet business people, when I meet other sports people, I do the Sunday game. Like, it actually only comes back into my head when something crazy, like someone sending you a letter about your dicky bar, someone asking you about where, where should you sit the gays or what cage you should put around them at a wedding. It, it, it doesn't enter my brain. The question, Nicky, related to that is, is it important for people to come out? Is it anybody's business whether a sports person is gay or not? Yeah, we had this conversation as well. It's like, I was thinking, should I talk about it or not? Like, why should I talk about it? Like, should it not just be normal? But I think it is important that there is a few people that do, you know, do this and maybe talk about it a bit, not go overboard, but just talk about it um, for other people to feel a bit more comfortable. But I always had this dilemma in my head, like, should I, do I have to, why? Um, but I should, I have this sort of a, a dilemma all the time. Um, but yeah, I, I feel comfortable enough with myself that I want to, to you know, be a, maybe a role model to someone. I never know, it could be anyone that maybe they feel more comfortable That's now. interesting, so it's yeah. not so much for yourself, it's not so much to have it out there, it's more an idea that you could help other people in, in that situation? Yeah, absolutely, because I'm completely comfortable with myself and how I am, and I think that's important if you are going to make that step, that you're really comfortable in your own body and not, because then it just confuses it and makes it harder to come out to people if you're not completely comfortable in your own self. And you would like to think it makes it easier mm. for the next person that's, uh, that's coming along, but I think that's the key thing to any young people that mm. is going through their mind, just be yourself. Mm. Like the. Time is so precious, especially when you're in the prime of your health, maybe a young sports person that you've got loads of, loads of other challenges. Mm. This shouldn't be one. And if you can, just, just be yourself. Would it have helped you? It would it have made it any easier for you if there were other people ahead of you that you could have uh, used as, as a sort of a, a benchmark, as a strange word to use, but if there were other gay sports people out there, in particular in hurling mm. and GA? I think it's a fair question. There probably would have been, or it would have been. Um, but. And it would have, you would have probably worked things out quickly in your head. So I, I think it's important. But you know, I wouldn't change much. No, I, like, again, I can't emphasise it enough. Last Saturday night, I do something on the Sunday game. I go out for a couple of drinks with uh, with Penty Bliss in the first half at night. Rory O'Neill for the second half at night. The same person, obviously. And I just, you know, I meet GA people. I meet sports people. And I believe because it's not in my head that it's less in their minds. I think that's actually, the Sunday game is a really interesting point because that's the most watched sports program in the country. And the fact that you're on it and the fact that it's just a non-issue for yourself, but also I think for viewers, that's a huge normalising thing in Irish society, I think. Yeah, I'd agree with you, Murph, because it's, and that's the way it is, like, like Shane touched on it there. I, I dream of a time, and I think that time will come where, you know, you mightn't even have gay bars, you mightn't have, you know, that just people will be, and it won't matter. Mm-hmm. You know, people will look at, you know, they'll say, he's a rugby player who happens to have a boyfriend, or she's the hockey player who happens to have a girlfriend in the same way. And, and again, I, I know I'm going back to my own time, like especially in the, at the end of my career, and my close teammates were Cork. We genuine, genuinely would have conversations about, I talk about lads, they talk about, about their girlfriends and stuff like that, and it just, there wasn't a stigma, or there wasn't anything there. And I'd lo- love to think that in time, and I do believe it will happen, it's just going to become the norm. And I think the, the media don't actually ask the question to current sports people either about how they feel about it and what their... Don't look, use the word disrespect, you know, disrespectful towards sports people, straight yeah. sports people in the... Uh, yeah, yeah. This, I think there's almost this idea that, 
you know, that if you are straight and you're in a sport and, you know, it's, it's a butch, you know, it's again that lazy stereotype that you're, you know, you're a macho guy and that means that, you, you know, you don't think about other people, you don't think about these issues. And I, I reckon if, you know, actually there were questions asked to current, uh, you know, rugby players about, you know, how they felt on these issues, I think the response would be really good, not just for a societal idea, but for individuals that may be, you know, thinking about coming out to their teammates or, you know, low, lower down the sporting levels, you know, guys who just want to, to come out to their teammates and their friends, that they recognise that, you know, there's a lot of top level sports people that would welcome and embrace people to come out. Have you encountered more problems outside of sport, maybe in general society, or have you encountered problems as, as compared to within sport? Yeah, absolutely, outside rather than in sport. Um, just on the street, I'm sure you've had it, like, you know, people just thinking they can say anything to you. Um, but I'm quite strong, I'll say something back if someone says something, so... Um, <laughs> well, well, what sort of stuff is it? I don't know, oh. like just, you know, stupid names or they call you on the street and, um, yeah, or, or look, or they, you know, looks as well, as well, which is always annoying. And guys think that they can just, uh, or let's, you know, can we can we join in all this sort of stuff? You know, um, I don't know what happens with, with with guys, but yeah, I mean, I've had men, yeah, lots of men that do that. They think you're with your girlfriend. Oh, yeah, let's let's join in. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with a guy says something like that? Um, just <laughs> as far away from him as possible. Yeah, tell them to yeah, tell them to look elsewhere. But yeah, it's kind of hard sometimes. You know, I I'd be quite a friendly person in general, so. Um, when something like that happens, it's kind of hard. But you look surprised by that, Donald. Oak. No, I'm not surprised. I'd, I'd be angry, to be honest. That's yeah. that's the, that's how I, I'd feel like stuff about, about stuff like that. And you see, that's the contrast that I always have in my own head when I'm talking about it. That you know, this still exists, and it's it's just so sad. And it's 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 sad to hear that a person can walk down the street with their girlfriend, their boyfriend, or whatever. But then. Is that just part of the way society is that, you know, be it your creed, your, your colour, you know, they're, they're bigots yeah. out there and they'll just yeah. look for something that's different to pick on. And like you exactly. said earlier on, it's more of a reflection on themselves than mm -hmm. it is on, on you. But I think there's more than that, actually. There is a normalisation of, of using gay as an adjective um, with right. negative, right. negative yeah. um, connotations. And that, that exists in, in society. It actually exi it still exists mm -hmm. in sport. It exists in rugby as well. And I think as long <coughs> as that exists, it's going to make people harder to come out in, in uh, normal life, but also in, in the sport, in changing room as well. And I think, you know, if they're going to make it, if sports people are thinking what we can do to make a change, to make an environment more uh, friendly, then I think dropping that is a huge, is, is number one. It, it shouldn't, it just shouldn't be used. Yeah, I think that's a great point from Shane. Um, and in a lot of situations, people don't even realise they're using it. They don't mean to be, you know, they don't mean to be disrespectful. I remember a couple of years ago in the court dressing room, a younger player came over to me and we were talking and was something, he said, ah, that's gay. Yeah. And I looked at him and the poor kid nearly went through the floor because <laughs> he freaking, but in that example, he, he was a, a sweet kid, he, he didn't mean any badness by it, but it has become part of the language and you're dead right, it's hugely harmful to the, the person who's hearing that. On the other side of that, how beneficial is it to hear a very, it's just a very casual statement by Jer Brennan after Dublin, after St. Vincent's, I should say, won the All-Ireland club title. He just thanked all the players, girlfriends and boyfriends, which should, I've seen people write about this where it should just, that it's no big deal. And maybe that's the best way. Suddenly you see that actually you can break down perceptions and break down barriers just with a casual statement like that, which maybe indicates that there are plenty of, uh, of course there are plenty of gay sports people, but a lot of people might be out to their teammates, might be out in their own circles, but for whatever reason, decide they don't feel the need to necessarily tell the wider world. Yeah, I think that's great, and it's awesome that he said that, and I think it's obviously we're moving in the right direction that he's able to just say that um, as part of a speech, which is amazing. Yeah. Uh, hopefully more can follow. Well, listen, it's great talking to you, the three about this tonight. It's been really good. I hope everyone's been as interested as we have. Shane Horgan, thanks so much. Nikki Simmons and Donald Cusack. <laughs>